that this week is Parsha's Basholach, and uh, this Parsha has a tremendous amount of, of Yisoidus fundamentals and important concepts that come out of it that are extremely important for understanding the purpose of the Kalei Yisrael, the Jewish people, we're supposed to be accomplishing, we're supposed to be achieving as a, as a people, and, and a lot of ideas as to why we're still in exile to this very day. Uh, we've spoken about in, the, in the past about the fact that uh, the Shir Shoyam has an allusion to Eo, the story of Eo, because Eo was the was the scapegoat for the Jewish people by by the Yamsuf, because uh, measure for measure, when he he was with Faro, was it Paro, Pharaoh Paro, he was uh, he was one of the three people that, that Paro consulted in terms of trying to decide whether or not to drown the Jewish children, how to deal with Jewish people, and. One of them was Bilam, who said to kill the Jewish people, and one of them was, was Yisro, who ran away, and merited to become the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu because, as a result of that. And uh, the third was Eov, who, Gemara says, remained quiet and didn't speak up on behalf of the Jewish people. So because he wasn't a vehicle to feed the Jewish people at the time he could have been, back in Paro's court, measure for measure, he became that which Hashem used to pull the Sat and the Sitra Achra, so, 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 so from the Jewish people by, by the Yamsu because the Medrash says that at the time the Jewish people stood by the sea, that the Amina Sedim was, was arguing the fact that the Jewish people were involved in the Vodazor just like the Egyptians were, and therefore either you save both the Egyptians and the Jewish people, or you drown both the Jewish people and the Egyptians, as Rashi points out, it's a time of Din, that's why it says Matit Zakalai, you know, why are you praying, you know, calling out to me, God says, uh, because it was a time of din, very, very serious din at that time. And uh, in order to be able to get the Sitra Achra away from the Jewish people by the Yamsuk, who is to get to end the accusation so God could do the miracle, so to speak, because he likes to follow the rules of creation he created, that the start of Eov begins there. And as a result, in the Shir Shoyam, it says, Yemin uh, Hashem Tirz Oyev, the right hand of God, Smashes the enemy, but as the result points out, that the, the words Tiritz Oyev can be actually rearranged to spell the word Saras Iyo because the Jewish people were given a vision at the Yamsuf that Iyo was the reason why they were able to escape measure for measure. And also, the result explains that, that Iyo was also the Gilgul, the reincarnation of Terech. And as a result of that, it's also part of his Tikkun to go through what he went through, but it was all. You know, measured out, uh, measure for measure perfectly, it's not a case of bad things happening to good people, he's not, you know, unjustified, that really this is the measure for measure for you, you for putting the fifth, and according to the Zohar, he actually didn't stay quiet, but rather said don't kill them, but inflict their bodies and take their money, which is why his body is inflicted and his money was taken away, lost his family, all things, so there's a lot going on this week's Parsha, but one of the most important things in this week's Parsha is the story of the Mott. And not just because it was heavenly bread, not just because we complained and God gave it to us, but uh, the man actually holds the key to the whole the whole goal of the Jewish people, of everything we're striving to become. That's what the man really is all about. We'll see in a second to Hashem. And uh, had we done the man properly, so to speak, then the ghoul would have come and we would not have been attacked by Amalek. In the, we wouldn't have broken Shabbos, as the Gemara points out in Shabbos, that that because the Jewish people didn't keep Shabbos, were attacked by, by Amalek as a result of that. But it's more than that. And, and the connection is so strong that later on, Haman, who was a descendant of Amalek, of course, the word Haman is the word Haman, the Man, the Man itself. So a lot of very deep connections. Again, this is discussed in my book in detail, Redemption to Redemption, the very deep and intricate connection between the holidays of Purim and Pesach, which you can get online. And... Uh, and yet one of the most important points that comes out uh, from the parish itself, the, in terms of the man itself, the understanding of the man means the Jewish people, conceptually, in terms of from historical point of view, is actually, it comes out from a, 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 a nuance in between two psuki, right? What happens, the Jewish people complain, God promises the man, the man falls, God tells Moshe to tell everybody to collect one number of man, and that also is very significant, the, significant the word Omer itself, in terms of what that means, but the, uh, and he says, the Torah says over here, right, it says, V'yomer Hashem Moshe, right, God told Moshe, Hineni, Mamti Lechem, Lechem in Shemaim, I'm going to rain down bread from Shemaim, V'yatza Amlatu, Devayom V'yomer, and they'll go out and collect it every single day, 
Laman anasenu hayelech basarasi im lo. So the point of the man was not the food itself. The Torah tells you right here. The point of the man was to test the Jewish people to see if they're going to keep Torah or not. Specifically, Shabbos, we'll find that around by Das Mavirim. They go out and collect the man on Shabbos, or at least go looking for it, even though they uh, it wasn't there because the birds ate it as part of the master plan. So therefore, there's a minhag to put out food for the birds uh, of Shabbos to give them their just dessert, their just reward for having complied with the with uh, God's plan over here. And uh, and this is what the point of the man is, specifically to test the Jewish people. So it may have been food, but that's not the main point over here, right? So it says, mashishi, but it's going to be on the sixth day. Asher yaviu. Right? You should prepare that which you bring in. Alasher to yom yom. So normally you could only collect one omer of man every single day, but since you cannot collect man on Shabbos, and you need man specifically for Shabbos, so therefore... The Torah is telling, because Bochel told Moshe Ben to tell the Jewish people that that's the one day of the week, of Shabbos, that they're going to be able to collect the double portion. They're, they'll collect it, because normally you collect extra portion, and it rotted, you collected too little, it, it mystically and Kabbalistically became the, the, the full omer for the person, one omer per person, but uh, on Erev Shabbos, if you collected two omers of man, the second one didn't rot, because that was the Chod Shabbos it was, it was like a Shabbos in order to make sure that they had food on Shabbos itself, and they should collect and prepare it. So that's what it says. That's what God tells Moshe Rabbeinu to do, right? So what happens? This goes on. They collect the man day after day. It turns out exactly as Moshe said. Anybody who took more than an omer accidentally, purposely, whatever, so they rotted, and actually a lot of it dissolved into the ground and went to the rivers, so the nations of the world were able to taste the man for the rivers themselves, right? And then later on, when they came to time for Erev Shabbos, they actually collected uh, extra, but not what does what the Torah say? The Torah says, right? Moshe was supposed to tell him in advance, but the Torah itself says the following thing. It says, On the sixth day, right? Right? They were able to collect a double omer for each person. Two uh, in a Mishnah Lechem over here. And they were surprised. They came. So the people came to the Nesim, and they said to the Nesim, what's going on over here? Right? We went out to the field, and we collected, you know, more than normal, and every other day that we had more than normal, you know, we did it accidentally, we didn't know, we did it, you know, but we collected more than, than normal, and normally the, the surplus would always rot, but today it's not rotting, well, you know, it's, the system breaks somehow, things change, the rules change, what's, you know, we don't know. So they came to the Nassim, and the Nassim didn't have answers, they also didn't know, because Moshe apparently had not informed them, right? So, they go to Moshe, and they say, you know, What's pshat? What's going on over here? How is it possible to collect an, an extra amount of, of man and it didn't disappear? So Moshe says, V'yalma aleihem, and Moshe says to them, Hu asher diber Hashem, Shabbason Shabbos kodesh l'Hashem. That's what Hashem said. The Shabbos is a, is a sanctified day to Hashem, machar, right, tomorrow. It's a share tofu, a fu. What you want to bake, go ahead and bake today on Shabbos. For a's, Asher to Bashlu, Bashelu, whatever you're going to cook, you should cook. Ves Koha Oidev Hanichu, right? Whatever's left over, put aside the for yourself. The Mishmeres Araboke, it will it will last. It's not going to rot, and you'll have it for Shabbos itself. That's what it says. It says it did exactly that, and Hanichu also Araboke, Kasher to Yvah Moshe, Elohi Ish, be Rimal, Elohi Sabo, right? And just like Moshe promised, it didn't rot the next day on Shabbos, no worms came to infest it. Right? right? They collected the Yom Shvi Shabbos Lo Hiyabod, and on the seventh on the seventh day of Shabbos, it wasn't found over there. That's what it goes. It gives me. It talks about a little bit more, you know, over here, and then it says Vehi Yom Shvi Yatsu Min Ha'am. Lilkot Volomatsu, right? But of course there were the scoffers. Das and Vivirim, primarily Moshe's proverbial thorn in his side, went out specifically looking for the man to prove that Moshe was a liar with the Medrash. The birds took it away, they didn't find it. Right? So then comments on that remarks and says, the Yomar Hashem El Moshe, right? Hashem says to Moshe Benu, Adana me anta lishmor mitzvosai vasarasai. For how long are you not going to believe in me? And and keep sh- and keep my my misses and my Torah, right? And it's talking to Moshe Ben. 